Hey everyone, in today's post I'm going to be sharing with you five lessons that I learned from reading the book You Are a Badass by Jen Chinchero. And if you're new to my channel, I'm Nephi, I'm a self-love mentor and blogger and I blog at nephiaguntaye.com. So with that said, let's get into this week's video. Have you read any books about money mindset lately? They have the power to unblock you so that you can become financially free. I started reading these books a few years ago. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind was my cherry pop <laughs> because I realized that otherwise money would just keep going through my fingers because I wasn't paying it enough focus, attention and respect. Looking at your financial blueprint is a pretty interesting exercise. I had modelled my parents financially up until a few years ago when I really decided to take my money seriously. You may be listening to this post because you run the finances for your family and there's a lot of bad habits to break or the knock-on effects for you and your future will be huge. In this post, I will share with you five principles I learned from reading the book You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. Up until a few years ago, Jen Sincero, author of You Are a Badass at Making Money, would have agreed that she was the last person you should go to for money advice. As a 40 year old freelance writer living in a converted garage and barely making enough money to scrape by, she wasn't exactly the poster child for financial success. However, all that changed once she finally decided to get serious about her financial situation, especially the way she thought about money and the way she dealt with it on a daily basis. Fast forward to a few years later when Sincero became a New York Times bestselling author and there's no doubt that the changes she has made have paid off in a big way. To that end, I decided to see what financial lessons You Are a Badass at Making Money, Sincero's second book, would provide. Though this book is mostly about mastering your money mindset, there are a few practical tips that anyone can employ, no matter where you are on your financial journey. Number one, get clear on your financial goals. If you don't have them already, Sincero says that you have to get clear on your financial goals before you can do anything else to grow your wealth. By that, she means so much more than just picking a number that, you, that would be nice to see in your bank account. To her, setting financial goals means getting clear on why you want the money, what you intend to spend it on, and how great it will feel once you, financially, you finally have it in your possession. The more specific you can get with these details, the better. Like saving up for a down payment on a house, or getting out of credit card debt, or taking that bucket list vacation. These goals are meant to give you something concrete to work towards, an incentive to keep making changes in your life, and even when these changes feel uncomfortable. Sincero is the first to admit that changing your money mindset is not easy, but she believes that when you have a few, a few firm goals in mind, especially ones that you want more than the comfort of your old behavior patterns, you can overcome just about any obstacle. I have a related blog post, it's called five steps to improve your money mindset. Number two is be willing to change. So with th that in mind, her next financial lesson is that if you want to make more money than you're making right now, you also have to be willing to make some changes in your life, particularly changes that will push you out of your comfort zone. Sincero believes that we play a role in creating our current financial situations by following the same patterns of behaviour over and over again. This could mean working at the same job for years on end without asking for a raise or continuously spending money on shopping sprees. I know I have been guilty of the second one. <laughs> 
But whatever your personal patterns are, she's clear on the fact that you need to make the conscious decision to be willing to change your habits before you can actually set about altering them. On my blog, I have a related post, it's called Nine Personal Finance Tips to Help You with Money Management. Lesson number three is to take decisive action. Once you've set your goals and have come around to the idea that some of your habits need to change, the next step is to take decisive action. Sinjiro recommends starting by creating a plan for how you intend to meet your goals and then breaking that plan down into bite-sized action steps. So for example, taking a second job in the field where you want to start a new career or hiring someone under you to help you handle more business. She also notes that you don't have to have the whole plan figured out right away. In fact, in her mind, it's better to stay open to different possibilities rather than get too laser focused and following one path. But the key is that you have to start taking steps towards meeting your goals as soon as possible. A related post I have on my blog is Seven Lessons Learned from the Richest Man in Babylon. Lesson number four is to invest in things that will help you grow financially. Sinjiro is a big believer that you have to spend money to make money. For her, these investments looked like hiring someone to do her website for her when she was first getting her editing business off the ground and signing up for a few different coaching services in order to push herself to take her business to the next level. Though your investments may be different, she cautions against letting the fear of spending money hold you back from investing in something that will have a huge payoff down the road. However, she does note that when you're making a large investment, you need to be sure that you're willing to do whatever it takes to make it worthwhile in the end. If you need some ideas on ways to make more money, on my blog I have a post called 102 ways to make an income. Lesson number five is don't give up. Sincero's last tip is simple, is simply don't give up. Again, she admits that the road to changing your financial situation is rarely ever simple. However, if you have the tenacity to keep trying and you stay focused on your goals, she believes that everyone has what it takes to create real and lasting change in their lives. On my blog, I have a related post called 20 Mindset Improvement Tips. Some cool things that happen as a result of doing this thought work are one, you start to understand your conscious and subconscious thoughts about money and then you're able to rewire it. Two, you start to believe that we live in an abundant universe and that you can plug into this and see what turns up for you in life. And then three, you learn that we are all a work in progress. No one is ever finished. And at each new level, there is a new devil to face. Also, you learn that you need to keep learning and implementing what you're learning each day. This is all part of the fun of life. And lastly, you get to invest in yourself and also to give back. And life is better that way. Summing up, what we focus on expands, so by putting daily affirmations in your phone, like I am an abundant badass at making money, will not only make you smile when they pop up on your phone, but will also help to rewire your brain so that it becomes the way you think, act and become. Other things you can do include putting your financial priorities on your daily success list or schedule. Um, you could journal, you could try journaling the bigger picture of what you're creating in the next three to five years. And things will start to shift at the same time as you continue to work on them. Finally, if you're resistant to talking or thinking about money, let it be a sign that you need to give it more attention and there's something you need to learn in this space. 
In the description below is a link to the show notes. There you'll find the recommended posts and a link to where you can purchase your copy of the physical book. Um, alternatively, you can purchase the audio version through Audible. Audible is a company owned by Amazon and they have audio versions of the most popular books I've mentioned on my channel. Although I prefer buying a physical book, there are times when I need my eyes for something else, like when I'm cooking or at the gym. I fill these spaces with audiobooks or podcasts. I found it useful and thought you might as well. So go to nephewguntoye.com forward slash free book to get your first audiobook for free when you sign up. Signing up for free audiobook will result in me receiving financial benefits from Audible which helps out this channel. Do you agree with my tips? Have you read any of these books? Have you any money mind books that you're working on? I love to hear about them. Make sure to like and share and let me know in the comments below. You can talk to me on all social medias or ask me a question on my website, nephewguntoye.com. Myself or my team will respond to your questions within 72 hours. Thank you for being a freedom seeker and I'll see you in the next post. P.S. I also handpicked these videos which I recommend you watch next.